question so so yesterday we have started the configuration related to centralized id based concept now we are going on further steps okay the grc call system is not working uh, i need to recreate the user setup system okay let us create here so I'm just again I'm creating the users. So in GRC I'm first creating the user WLM underscore user one. So the user will have a normal role, normal role in the GRC. Uh, not normal role. The launchpad will code access. So the launchpad role is we have four roles dedicated to SPM or EAM emergency access management. One role is for admin, controller, owner, and user. So the user role consists of those two roles. Yeah, so let me open this role again. So these are the two depots we are assigning to the end user in the GRC system. Save it. Now, FFID. So FFID will be of service type. And the role would be firefighter role means critical role basically oh sorry this is grc system no need to create we need to create a owner ffid owner So the main role is super user management owner and then the normal regular roles access approver, access requester, end user, and WBC. And controller. So three IDs created in the GRC. Now let me log in into backend. So that is 200 point here. C WLM underscore user one. So this user has access to these two ports. Let us take these as regularly used. Okay, now this user is already here. And then after five minutes.
FFID will be of service type. And the role should be special role, file pattern role. Okay, we have two T codes SPR and SE38. That would be sufficient. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, normal ID, FFID has been created in the ECC system. So, we are done with the first step. We need the following IDs as mentioned below. In GRC, we created three IDs. Five Excuse items. me. Yes. Yesterday, you have given a for service FFID in the ECC, another role. No? Uh, yesterday's system is not working, so this is today's different system. Okay, uh, but this uh, role is correct only, no? GRAC underscore SPM underscore FFID for firefight ID in ECC system. This one you are talking about, right? Yeah, in ECC FFID. Yeah, no. can we assign that? I did not assign this role. I want to show you the consequence of not assigning this role. Hence, I'm not assigned. Okay. Right. So the IDs have been put up. Now let us go into second step. Define or declare FFID owner and controller in setup. Stand. So we have done this step for earlier in risk analysis also for risk owner, mitigation approver, mitigation monitor also. So we went into setup tab. Under setup tab, we have access control owners link. Under this path, we have defined it. going to set up under setup access owners access control owners okay here create search for the ID WLM FFID owner so he will act as what? FFID owner, first one. Save it. Similarly, declare the other person, WLM controller. WM controller firefighter role controller sorry not role ID controller firefighter ID controller save it okay so these are the two we have defined here FFID controller and owner so this acts like a central place where we define all the owners so I have written the brackets if you see here, not required in GRC form. So you know to, no need to define, no need to repeat, the, do this step in the GRC form. After creating the IDs, first step, you can directly jump to third step. So you will understand why that. When we go to, I will show you tomorrow when the system is up, system is down now. I am moving on to fourth, third step, mapping FFID owner and FFID controller to the FFID. So as per the diagram, if you see here, this is my FFID. Every FFID will have FFID owner and FFID controller. So this mapping should be done. So for, for each for our FFID, what we create, who will act as the FFID owner and who will act as the FFID controller, that has to be defined. 
So this is the respective paths where you define that NWBC setup emergency access management. NWBC setup super user assignment and then you have owners here. Okay, so click on that. So I can see the owners now list here. You can just click on assign new entry, right? So click on assign. So owner, search for the owners. So this is my owner, WLM FFID owner. Yeah, fine. This guy will act as owner for which FFID? Firefighter ID. So I need to search for the firefighter ID. So these are all my list of firefighter IDs. My firefighter ID starts with the WLM star, WLM word. I cannot find any WLM related firefighter IDs. So this is an interview question. When in GRC, when I am trying to search for firefighter ID, the firefighter ID is not visible. What could be the reason? Anyone? Okay, which same job? Repository same job. Repository same job. Right. So repository sync job should be run whenever you create a new ID in the back end. That is one thing. Second thing, also the role also should be assigned, which I mentioned in my document. So this role. SAP underscore GRAC underscore SPM FFID. So just what I will do now is I will run the sync job without assigning the role, and then we will see. Go back and back end. If a credit is in there, it's a problem. If a credit is in there, it's a problem. Access. Synchronization jobs. Repository sync job. Incremental would be enough. You would like to cover the job? Okay. Yeah. So whether the data is loaded correctly or not, I can check in my table. GRAC user com. So my connector WLM. Okay, you can see now. I can see the FFID here. WLM underscore FFID. RFC user and user. Three IDs are there starting with WLM. Now let us search, try to search again. Under setup, super user assignment owners. Click on assign. Search for the owner ID. This is my owner ID. And I'm trying to search for a firefighter ID now. So in WLM client, if you see, there are a lot of other IDs are appearing. Other IDs are appearing here, but not my ID. Okay, so now you should be able to understand. So the requirement for the visibility of FFID, firefighter ID in the GRC is two conditions. One is sync job should be run, and then the second is First, this role has to be assigned to every FFID. So it's like an identification. Whichever ID is assigned with this role, considered to be the FFID ID. Now, question, why exactly this role? Why not some other role? OK? That is because it has been mentioned in the parameters. Let me show you the parameter related to that. And if you go to the parameters, 4010 parameter, if you see, this is the role name, SAP underscore GRAC underscore SPM FFID. What is it? Firefighter ID role name. So means this, whichever role is there under 4010 parameter, 
that role should be assigned to every FFID. All of you with this concept so far? Let us go into details. Let me assign this role. So I am going into backend, ECC, and to the FFID, I am assigning this role. Okay, for your understanding sake, what I do, I create another role, copy it. I will remove this role for this. And also let me run the same job because this is a new idea I created. Perfect ready to uh, okay. Done. Now let us try to search again. Set up super user assignment owners. So this is my owner, WLM underscore FFID owner. And here I am searching for FFID. WLM stop. Still not visible. FFID 2 is not visible. So this is a clear cut understanding that if you do not assign that role, that ID will not be visible in the GRC system. All of you clear? Any queries here? I'm selecting it. So this owner is owner for this FFID. Save it. Okay. Similarly, 
controllers under same setup super user maintenance controllers so click on sign search for the controller WLM underscore FFID. Yep, yep. Okay, now coming to controller. Here we have an option column called notification by. So we have three options here. So as I told you, controller is a person who actually monitors the activity of the user. Right? So monitoring is the main activity of controller so he should be notified about monitoring activity right how he will be notified i can notify the controller we can notify the controller through email so it means what is the purpose if i select email what happens is the system will generate the log whatever your ffid has been performed using FFID, what all the posts the user has executed. That log will be generated in the notepad format. The notepad will be attached in mail, and the mail will be sent to this controller if you are selecting the option as email. OK? All of you know the first option. What is email concept here? Mm -hmm. The audit log. What P codes the user is executing using that FFID? That log will be generated, attached as a notepad file, and sent through email. Next, coming to workflow. In workflow, if you're selecting workflow, the respective approver will get under my home in work inbox it will come as a one of the work item as a request so the controller has to open that and he can check the log inside it it comes into his work inbox the users the approvers work inbox if you are selecting as a workflow whatever the log which we are sending earlier to notepad in mail the same log will come as a request here in the inbox so he can open that request and he can see the log inside okay all of you care about the two options email and workflow and then log display is nothing it doesn't send it doesn't send the log to email it does not send to the work inbox you are only allowing the user to display within the grc there is a log. So here, if I go back to my system, under NWBC, reports and analytics. Here, we have emergency access management reports. So this link will be sent to him. This link will be sent to him. When he clicks on the link, he can see the log attached. In that log, it means it will open up the GRC screen when he clicks on the link. So this particular page gets opened up. This page. Firefighter log summary report with the details and the log here. OK. All of you clear for this so far? Three options. This also can be answered in a trick question. Controller. How many ways we can notify? What are the three ways? Explain each way. Any query here? So the first option and the last option, anybody can select. Email and work, log, work, log display. But if, if you want to select, if you want to define as a workflow, then ARM should be implemented. If you have implemented ARM, only then this workflow is possible. Otherwise, you cannot define the workflow concept here. 
a la fiecare să o facă. Ok, acum am bunină. So I have defined the owner and controller to the FFID. Third step, fourth step, now we are in fourth step, right? Third step has been completed. Any queries in third step now? Moving on to fourth step. Define reason codes. Define reason codes. So what is this reason code concept? When you are entering into firefighter, when you are entering into firefighter, firefighter ID, you have to give the reason why you are going to use this FFID. So can you give me some reasons, some sample reasons, why do you want to use FFID? Anyone? Some reasons. To solve any to solve any issues, okay. Uh, any other example, answer? Uh, for example, if we use SQL then we can write as uh, some operator if we have so I can use the uh, I can use the answer. Can we write like this? So, if upgrade is not happening, to provide some critical access uh, in limited period of time, in which uh, we can uh, see their log also, what user is using, and how how it is performing. Okay. So this uh, generally we use for. Uh, we can categorize as a generic reason you can give here. Reason code is specific to like a general, uh, generic reason code. Like all the issues in SAP, we can call them as incidents or a problem tickets. So if you are following the proper ITSM lifecycle management, uh, what do you mean by lifecycle management, ITSM? In a proper software project, what do what is the terminology what to use? So if you had attended the training like the VTL training, I don't remember the training name actually. So in that if you, you will get all these terminology like incidents, problem tickets, service requests, change requests, etc. So all the issues and problems of faced by the users fall under incident category. Incident. We call them as incident management then any new requirements or new config change just we want to do system setup has to be done that is considered to be as a service request if you want to do any role changes and all those things fall under change request so like this the work will be categorized as some activities so that specific values we will enter as a reason for here so that when user is trying to uh, trying to access FFID, he can choose any one of the value like this, like an incident or a service request, etc. So let me define some. This is the part under setup, super user maintenance, just below your controller, sir, I have reason codes. So these are the some reason codes, like you see some examples are there, cutover activities. Cutover activity is very generic uh, reason. Month end activity is also a very generic reason. Incident, as I told you, you see. 
service requests. Okay, so let us create. If I want to create a new one, click on create. So let me create as a Walmart incident. For which system? My system, WLM client 200. Okay, save it. So I have created now my my own reason code, one of the reason code. Walmart incident. Okay. So this is the one which, which we created. Suppose if I want to use any existing reason code here, how can we use it? So just you need to open it. Suppose I want to use cutover. Open. And here you just add your system name below. That's it. So you can use start using this as well. Clear all of you. So if you are opening up a system, if you come, if you are coming coming to this step for the first time, you will not see any reason codes. There are no standard reason codes given by SAP. Everything you have to create on your own. Okay? So you can create in this way. So to start with, you can create one or two. After once you understand better, you can create more if required. If you want to categorize the Wi-Fi credit sessions into proper session, proper categorization, accordingly you can create like something like this. So here they have created five different activities: cutover activity, month-end activity, incident, production support, like this. Okay. So what is the purpose? If we don't create reason code, will it impact? Yes, it will impact. We cannot lose the Wi-Fi credit. If you do not have your own reason codes for your system, you cannot log in with the credit. So let us see. So that's about reason codes. Okay. All of you clear with the fourth step. Now let me go into the final step. Before I go to the final step, so our configuration setup is done already. Now we will see the requirement, how the requirement comes. Say, suppose I am logging into ECC backend system with my normal ID. So, 200 client. WLM underscore user 1. I logged in. So this is my ECC. I can use these decodes, like SC16 I can use. These are assigned to me. I can use uh, SCC4. So these decodes I can use. But if I want to do some config change, I try to execute SPRO as an end user or from technical consultant also, as a security consultant also. It says you are not authorized to use the transaction SPR. 
So this user, WLM underscore user one, do not have access to, does not have access to SPRO transaction. Now this user needs SPRO decoder. So this is the scenario. The user will raise a request. He will up, he will raise a request for what? This FFID, the FFID which is holding that access. He will check first which FFID will have access to that. He can check through that SUIM. In SUIM, they can search right. If they if they if they know how to use SUIM, the respective consultants like the, any functional consultant or a, uh, we as we also user might say, see I am as end user they can say end user or a normal guy. He can just say I want SPRO T4, hence I need FFID. Please suggest me FFID. You can go and search in SUIM which FFID is having access to SPRO T4. Now he will raise a request. The raising of request can be done in two ways. One is manual way. This WLM underscore user one manually. What is a manual way? He will drop a mail to FFID owner explaining the requirement. What requirement? Uh, I have a config change to be done in SPRO related to connector configuration and I want to do some changes in GRC hence I need GRC in GRC system SPRO T4 access is needed so he will send this mail to FFID owner FFID owner will say approved in mail that mail will be sent to security team saying that approval has been granted please grant me FFID access then we go and manually link this ID WLM underscore user one with the input ID. So let us see how that manual will be done. Assuming the approval is we got up approval already. So the linking can be done under same setup super user assignment firefighter IDs. So here you click on assign. Firefighter ID. So this is my firefighter ID, WLM underscore FFID1. To which firefighter? So my firefighter is nothing but WLM underscore user1. WLM underscore user1. Okay. And you see the validity date here. Valid from date and valid to date. How many days it took actually? Yes, anyone? Two days. Check it again. Four. One month, 30 days, I think. Yeah, 30 days. So that 30 days is coming from this parameter, you see here. Default firefighter validity period, 30 days. So 30 days is not a, so if it really superficial, we never give 30 days. Hardly we give two to three days, let us give two days. I save it, the parameter. So means the default whenever we are like trading like this, system will select for two days only. So four to two, six, two days in this way. So here I have manually adjusted, but next time because of the parameter value we change, the system will automatically take only two days here. Okay, so let us keep it as uh, six days or seven days for our testing purposes. Okay, the linking has been done. So for this user, WLM underscore user one, WLM LM underscore FFID one has been linked from starting from today till six days, six days, 12th, till 12th of this month. All of you clear about the manual assignment, manual linking.
So FFID linking with the normal user ID is done in two ways, manually. Approval is also manual, linking is also manual. So approval in mail and then linking as I showed you now. There is another method which is automated, workflow concept. So user need not send any mail to FFID owner. What the user will do? Any user who wants to use FFID, he just goes to GRC system under my home, he can submit access request. So he can submit a request online here by choosing this option. Request type should be emergency user access. And here he can see the firefighter ID, which firefighter ID he wants. Suppose I want this, this is the way he selects FFID owner. FFID has been selected so again. FFID has been selected and you see here approver assignment approver is considered to be FFID owner and system knows already for this FFID who is the role, uh, uh, approver that's it you just give a reason here why do you need this particular FFID and then you click on submit as soon as you click on submit the system will send for this guy's approval assignment approver approval so he can land, he can see the request to landing in his work inbox. When this approver approves it, the linking also will be done automatically by system. The linking is also done automatically by system. Whatever I have just showed you, that linking will be done by through system, GRC. So this is all possible because of ARM implementation, the last component of access control, ARM access request management all of you clear the access request we need any role for creating sorry requests. for creating requests uh-huh is any role is needed for that creating request yeah that the firefighter request right workflow request uh, what role uh, you are talking about? Uh, just uh, no, that launch pad, that option is there, right? Creating the role. Access request everything. Okay, this this page, this this link you want, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, give end of VC role, or end user role. End user. End user role will give access to this my home page and all this my profile, etc. So there he can see access. To this. Okay, so this we can discuss again when we come to ARM. So let us continue with manual. We have already done the linking also. So linking is done in this below path. So two ways, either you can do it from here, it's a firefighter IDs, or it can, it can also be done from here, firefighters. Okay. Right. So the entire setup is done. The linking has been done. Now the final thing is the user, how he will log in into Firefighter ID and how he can start using the Firefighter ID. So that part we'll see. Now. So who is the user and where should the user log in from? Anyone? Who is the user who needs access? Okay. Yeah. And where is user? GRC system. Yes. So I'm logging into 100 client to GRC. WLM underscore user one. Okay, log in successfully. Next, what is the next step? After logging in, you can see what is the user. user Lodge, the Lodge pad uh, keyboard will happen. 
launch pad here. He has to open the launch pad. So how the user can open the launch pad? He has got access. So that one. What is that? Score SPM or EAM. Right. GRAC underscore EAM or SPM also you can hit that. Yeah. So you can see the launch pad now. And in the launch pad also, I can see already FFID has been assigned. That link is there is an entry here. Which FFID is assigned? You can see WLM underscore FFID one. In which system? Who is the owner for it? Status is green means you can use it. Okay. And then I click on log on. So log on means I am in hundred client right now in grc when i click on logon system will take me to the 200 client packet let us log on so this is what system was asking reason code if i don't enter the reason code if i click on continue system will not allow me see below it is asking enter a reason code that is the reason reason code is mandatory and why i can see only two entries here Whereas in actual system, there are more entries in reason codes. Anyone? It shows for our system. Yes, for our system, WLM client 200, only two reason codes have been defined. All of you clear? Right. So I'm selecting incident, for example, and then I can give more details here. There is a bit uh, with space available to me. I can write my incident number, INC. What is the incident number? Like uh, I want to do some config change. Next, please enter the actions that you anticipate to perform. I want to perform SPR what you call. That is the reason I am entering into Firefox ready. And then continue. At the bottom, you have a tick mark. Click on the tick mark. As soon as I click on tick mark, a new screen is opened up. What is this client you can see now? Which client we are in? 200 client. What is the user ID you see all of you? FFID. Means from this launch pad screen, the system by, by when I click on log on, the system put me to this backend system, WLM client 200. And a new session has been opened. And that session is under the name of WLM FFID. So this FFID now has access to SPR work. So he can directly execute SPR work. He can perform the changes. But note, whatever the T codes you are executing through FFID, that will be recorded and sent to controller. So means somebody is watching you. Keep that in mind. You cannot do whatever you want because for everything you are doing, you should be accountable and you should take the responsibility for it. Because the entire audit log related to the changes what you are doing, which people you executed, everything will be sent to the controller. Once you are done with your activity, you completely log out of your screen and log out of the launch pad also. And then you are done. The firefighter session has been completed. So this is centralized concept. The, we have a problem or an issue in the backend ECC, but I am logging from GRC and then executing the launch pad depot. So let us see once again, GRAC underscore, I will use SPM now. GRAC SPM. I can see the FFID here, log on tab. Again, incidents. INC2, what T4 you want to perform, SC38, 
continue and I can execute SC38. Some program I want to run. You have no display authorization. There is no authorization for running. Okay, anyways. So once you are done with your activity, you can log off and you are out of the firefight session. So two sessions are performed. So till the time you log in and log out, that is considered to be one session. Okay, any, any queries so far? Controller not missing uh, marks, box one, what is the issue? Okay. Now let me show you one more thing. If I log in with my ID, this is my ID. GRC user one. Huh? I am executing the launch pad default. GRAC underscore EAM. This is my screen. Why I cannot see any entry here? What could be the reason or what is the meaning of this? Whereas this user screen is like this. This is my screen. What is the difference between the two screens? Why I cannot see any of this? Uh, your ID is not assigned with Firefight ID. Firefight Yes. So simple. Okay. So in Launchpad, if you don't see an FFID, that means that particular your ID is not assigned with any FFID. So this also you will get a lot of issues, uh, tickets from the end users. They just execute the T code and they say, I cannot see any FFID here. So that is straightforward directly. FFID is not assigned. Sometimes what a user will say, I was able to see till yesterday, but today I am not able to see. What could be the reason for that? Validity. Yes. Validity could be required. Okay. So where can you check the validity? Under the parameters 4001. No. Okay. Four zero one zero. No. Four zero one zero. No. When we are saying the five point, there is something we can say. Okay. Four zero one zero. So when you assign the firefighter ID to the normal user, in that link only you can see the ad validity. Where did we assign under setup? Firefighter, firefighter IDs. Here, open your record and check it. This is my record. Okay, FFID one assigned to WM user one. Open this, and there you can find the validity. This is the validity. So you can come and check to the user if it is expired or active. So if it is expired, you can communicate to user. This FFID assignment has been expired. You need to raise a new request. What is that in the parameters? So when I am trying to assign a new, for example, now let me assign for another user now. Same as the Suppose if I am assigning for this user, for A1, for example, okay you see the validity date why it came as 11 2 here 
from 4 to 11 to the meter vehicle engine is a motor similar one oh we said parameter value yes what is the parameter value we said it is the parameter value day how many days seven days seven days so starting from 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 okay understood all of you what is the parameter related to <coughs> right so i'll stop it here We'll continue tomorrow again. We'll discuss some other details of this login. And then we'll go on to decentralized concepts. Yes, any queries? Uh, where we can see all the owners, firefighter owners? Yes. Where did you define the owners, firefighter okay. owners? Okay. okay. Maximum how many users we can assign one pair? Many. Maximum? Users. How many for how many users we can different one we can assign one pair right ready? At the time of the line at the line and then assign this question. One firefighter ID here I have just seen. let me open the screen again. So this is my firefighter ID. Under this I can click on add, add, add. There is no limit. You just add a number of IDs. Okay. And my question is at at a at a time only one user can use uh, firefighter if i will use firefighter some someone other can not we cannot use that firefighter right yes okay. if it is assigned to two users for example okay. So I assign to this user also now, and I say, so if this user is using, WLM underscore user is using, A1 cannot use it. So this person, once he logs out, then only A1 can log in into this firefighter ID. So you can test this during your uh, practice, whether you can log in or not with the two users for the same method. Any other queries? Any questions? And if you will not log off, uh, means uh, by mistake, then we'll have to kill his session, right? Yes. So basically. Any other? Uh, Shuzha, uh, I have one question. Like, if uh, suddenly Pandora uh, didn't get the notification or the process, is there any thing from outside? Suddenly cannot happen. Okay. Okay. What do you mean by suddenly here? Like, and today he didn't get. Uh, is there any uh, objects related we need to check or what is there? So, the basic understanding is no sessions have been conducted today if he, he is not receiving any logs, any notification. That is the basic thing. Okay. If he is not getting, we need to go and check why he is not getting. So, there, is, there could be several aspects. The firefighter controller user ID might be expired, might be logged, 
email id is removed from the su01 master record there could be several reasons for it so you okay. need to uncheck it and everything okay any other queries right so we'll close it today we'll see some other details of this login again tomorrow centralized and then we will move on to second concept decentralized concept Okay. Thanks a lot. See you tomorrow. Then when I come to see you tomorrow, I will get the car and the car.